Okay, I want to take a few questions from our listeners. They send them in to us at Politicon on Twitter and Instagram. You can send yours in on Twitter or Instagram at Politicon, or you can email them to us at podcasts at Politicon.com. And we had a few come in for all three of you, so each of you's got a few um, this week. Uh, Sunny, we'll start with you. Sylvia from Burlington. I, there's a lot of Burlington, so not sure which state that's from. Sylvia says, Trump said he did not hear the racists in the villages retweet. How is that possible? He didn't look at it and he retweeted it like an idiot without listening to it. That is, I mean, that if, is a quick if answer. If okay, that's what there happened, you go. If that's okay. how it's ha- if if that's how it happened, that could be the only way it could have happened, right? Okay, okay. Honest answers. That's what we're here for. John, Donna from Cedar Rapids. Mitch McConnell is wearing a mask. Is that a message to the Trump campaign? Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Yes, they, okay. they know they are in trouble and they've got to fix it and they've got to do it fast. Ida, uh, David from L.A., right there, maybe he's near you. Is now the time for universal health care? Every, uh, uh, you know, I, I feel like always is the time for universal health care, especially during this pandemic where you see so many disparities in, uh, you know, in the in the the treatment of the people who are coming down with COVID. And it's not just black and brown people, it's poor white people. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a universal health care person all the time. It, it doesn't, I, I don't waver from that. I don't think it should be conditional. I think, you know, health care is okay. a right, not a privilege. Sunny Art from Jacksonville says, if the polls don't pick up soon, will Trump drop out? No, I don't think he'll drop out. I think he will use every excuse he can to say why the system was against him, as opposed to actually putting together a coherent plan to reach outside of his base to more people. Okay, I don't usually stop um, during these, but I'm going (laughs) to stop and ask you. um, That seemed both of those last two answers, Sonny, surprised me. Uh, (laughs) So, (laughs) well, I'll wait till we get to the last one for you. Um, But those surprised me from you. John, I'll move on to you for right now. Kenneth from Tampa asks, Biden in the basement seems to be working. How can he fuck it up? (laughs) How can he fuck it up? Um, I don't, I, I really, I really think he can't. I mean, I guess if he went out and, I, I really I think this election is such a referendum on Trump and Trump is such a unique, historically awful candidate, figure and incumbent and human being that that I I, I really think. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything he could do. Okay, he, I he can talk. That's what he can do. If he goes out there and starts talking. <laughs> Okay, yep. Ida, that that leads me right to the next question for you. Jason, who uh, sent us a message via uh, Twitter, asks, what's your favorite thing about Joe Biden? <laughs> um, my favorite thing about Joe Biden is those memes that they had when Obama was president and it was um, him saying things that were <laughs> inappropriate. That's my favorite thing about Joe Biden. Um, you know, uh, I think that him being quiet has been effective in the, in the truth that Donald Trump isn't quiet. Um, but I'm a, I'm very afraid of Joe Biden's mouth because Joe Biden, um, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. You can pull up reels of things that, that he said that has, have been offensive and inappropriate and just wrong. But, um, my favorite thing about him is, um, I don't know. I don't. I'm, 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 you gave us the memes. That works. Are you going to vote for him? <laughs> Am I going to vote for him? Yes. I have no choice. Okay. Okay. Um, like Sonny. Sonny Javier from New York City. When will the Europeans allow Americans to travel there again? <laughs> um, as soon as they realize how devastating it is for their economy to keep travel out. And and once they realize that, you're going to see a new standard. But I think that they are kind of wagging their finger back in Donald Trump's face for um, all the criticisms that he has put over them over the last four years. And this is kind of their only way to be like, nah, 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 nah. And they're taking advantage of it. But 
uh, for a region that kind of does re, uh, rely on uh, the economics of travel, it, they won't be able to sustain it for long. Okay. John, Teresa from San Francisco uh, asked, is it time for a constitutional convention? <laughs> yes, but uh, I, I don't but think only we your side one. gets to make the rules. <laughs> uh, you're right. Well, I, I don't. I mean, yes, we we do need a rethinking structurally of of some things. Ida has brought up some excellent points, as has Sunny on on basic structural problems that we have. Some of which would have to be requiring a, a constitutional convention, i.e., the electoral college, for example. The electoral college is really an awful thing and has only failed us, in my opinion, every time the Electoral College has trumped the popular position, as it were. I would say the population was right in 2000. I would say the population was right in 2016. They made the right choice. Uh, uh, but the system is rigged, and we got what we got. So, but but in, in, in practice, it would be such a disaster that I, I think it would do more harm than good. The Constitutional Convention, you're saying? Yes. Okay. Um, Ida, Nora from Orlando, the mainstream media model encourages outrage. Is it encouraging extremism? Absolutely. I think that when you think about, um, first of all, when you think about mainstream media and you talk about people who are actually having conversations on air about politics who never went to school for journalism and are not actual journalists and they have reality shows that we think are news programs. Absolutely. Um, it is cause it is feeding extremism. Um, again, I, I am not talking about a specific political party. I'm talking about across the board. Um, you think both sides oh, have yeah. those yeah, networks? We can't even have conversations anymore. Like, People who have who are conservative versus people who are liberal. When you think about the conversations, and I'm I'm a liberal, so I, I'm I am um, you know, and and I'm a liberal with it, with some conservative values, which you can't say anymore because now being a centric is a bad word. Being a centrist is a bad word. Being somebody you can't even claim your your political affiliation without offending somebody else. Absolutely, do I think they're feeding it? They feed it every day and. Unfortunately, for people who get most of their information from the new, these news programs, which they don't realize are, you know, personalities who are selling books. You know, I'm a stand up comedian, so I work in New York where I'll see, you know, Ann Coulter and Bill Maher are friends. Hey, I'm Clay Aiken. To hear the full episode, subscribe to this Politicon podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to pods. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Go to Politicon.com, follow at Politicon on social media, and listen to a new pod episode of How the Heck every Thursday.